someday you'll leave me Saying can we still be friends Come on in, great niece. Hey, girl, hey. Come on in, great niece. Hey, niece. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, boy, hey. Come on in. We about to get us a little. We about to get us a little dinner. I was gonna say lunch, but we about to get us a little dinner. Come on in. Hey, girl. Let me move y'all over. Hey girl, hey, I got on my little dingy wife beater like I just came from a domestic violence situation out in the parking lot. You know, I just wanted to have my, my loose bra on today. I wanted to have on my loose bra. You know, the old bra where the straps are loose and it's dingy looking. You know, it's, it's supposed to be white, but it's more like a smoker's teeth yellow. I'm dropping food on the floor. Come on in. We're going to do us a shrimp wrap. We're going to do us a shrimp wrap. I got two more of those wraps that Dr. Young sent through here. We got two more. Well, it's three in there. But we're going to go ahead and use these. Come on in. I'm going to show you what I'm doing in a second. You don't need to see the cutting board. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I am Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is the Facebook Live version of So Much to Say. This is a bonus. This is Sunday. These are my thoughts and my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. I kind of felt like I wanted to argue a little bit. You know, because I had posted a little something earlier about John McCain, and see, some of you black people are getting in your feelings, okay? Y'all black folks, kill me fighting for these white folks that don't have your best interest. Now, I'm not saying that that man was racist. I don't know him personally. I don't know that. I'm not saying that I don't have sympathy because that man had brain cancer. I have sympathy for anybody who suffers through it, an illness. I would not want to see anybody suffer. But what I am saying, I think sometimes you guys, uh, you miss the context of what I'm saying because you're looking at the surface. But see, part of the reason I say good day thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers is because I trust that you're going to get beneath, say, say it with me, beneath and get to the subtext. I, I believe that I'm talking to thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. Now see, some of y'all, y'all get stuck on the surface. I think every now and then some of Tyler Perry's people get stuck over here with us thought leaders, thinkers, and dreamers. And that was shady as hell, but you know, it is what it is. So let me go ahead and expound on what I was saying. And we're gonna have a nice little conversation over shrimp wraps, over our dinner. Okay, and get your, get your pens and pads out because I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. So what we're doing is we, we have a bit of purple cabbage here. Can you see this? So we got purple cabbage. I got a little Liz Wright plant in the background. What y'all know about Liz Wright? Get you some Liz Wright in your life. I write about Liz in my first book. That's why I love her so. I mean, that's how that lets you know how much I love her. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of um, mushroom in here as well. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna saute this. I'm gonna braise this cabbage. Uh, I'm gonna season it and I'm gonna pan sear it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan sear it with some vegan butter this time though, instead of olive oil. And we're gonna use this as our green, or not green, but as our garnish and stuff on top of our shrimp wrap because I don't have any spinach or kale or anything like that. So I'm gonna get some of these mushroom in here because you know, we gotta get this stuff out of here. See, that's the thing about eating raw, eating vegan, you know, eating raw vegetables. You gotta get that shit out of your freezer quickly because otherwise it goes bad. I know I don't chop well. I know I don't chop well, but trust and believe he's not gonna chop his finger. Now he may not do it properly, but he's not gonna chop his finger. Now back to what I was saying about John McCain. I'm not saying that I, you know, it's always, you know, sad and whatever when a person dies. But, you know, y'all posting that man on y'all Instagram and Facebook like y'all knew that man. Y'all act like y'all knew that man. And what I'm saying is, and I know we post people that, you know, that have touched us, but how did he touch y'all? 
How did he touch y'all? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying now if Oprah close her eyes tomorrow, bitch, I'm closing down shop for about a week. I won't be able to go live. Listen, I'm gonna be somewhere curled up in a corner because that woman has changed my life. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I think she might be the only person that I might really be starstruck if I ever meet her. Well, when I meet her, because I believe the day is going to come that I'm gonna meet that lady. But anyway, some of y'all got the posting John McCain all up on his all up on your social media and stuff. Do y'all even know his politics? Y'all just go like my thing is some of y'all act like battered women. You know how a battered woman will still have remorse for the man that beat her upside her head and, and tore her up and, and and that's how some of y'all are. And I'm not saying that he was a violent man. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying he, he was like Hitler. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is he voted primarily against most civil rights that you and your ancestors needed. Did you know this? Did you know that he voted against making Martin Luther King holiday an actual holiday? Did y'all know that? And y'all sitting here crying and posting all... Girl, if y'all don't sit down somewhere... It's like abused people praising and mourning over the abuse. Child. And then somebody talking about, well, he was a prisoner of war. And okay, what did he do for the what did he do for Chicago? What did he do for Baltimore? What did he do for the United Negro College Fund? Girl, he ain't did nothing for y'all. He was fighting for this country. And we all know this country has not been that great to us. He has not been that great to that this country has not been that great for, to us. So yeah, while I respect and honor that he was a prisoner of war and a, a great soldier and blah blah blah. He ain't did nothing for me and my people. What did he do when all them black folks were getting shot down in the street by the cops? And y'all posting this man up like he was just some martyr for black people. Y'all kill me. Y'all kill me with that nonsense. That man didn't even, y'all wouldn't even be getting off on January 15th or whenever the King holiday fall on. Y'all wouldn't even be getting off on that holiday. If it was up to him, because it wouldn't have been a national holiday. He didn't even respect Dr. King's works and efforts. Amy, you know me well. <laughs> Amy said, I knew you were going to come in and speak about this. Because, you know, I'm so sick of these black folks, you know, getting beat down by this, this country. And, and child, and y'all sitting here honoring stuff. Girl, if y'all don't sit down somewhere and the shit you need to be honoring, y'all don't honor. Okay. Now, now, now the black. Now, here's something you can be posting on your social media. Let me bring this up here because I'm tired of bending over. Now, here's if you want something to post on your social media, post Katherine Johnson, the woman who was, the woman who was a NASA NASA um, mathematician that was that was portrayed in the movie Hidden Figures. Her birthday was yesterday. She turned 100. Post her picture. You want to post something? Y'all kill me with that shit. Y'all make me sick. Y'all make me sick. You don't even know your own damn history and you weren't it, you posting about, oh my God, y'all get on my nerves. Oh, y'all get on my nerves. Where's my damn pain? Y'all make me get on here and get angry with y'all. Make me get on here and get angry with y'all because y'all sitting here worries, putting y'all, putting y'all, putting y'all, Oh, you wasting your social media space and tearing up my timeline with this foolishness. Now, again, again, I'm not saying that he was not a war hero. I'm not saying that, so don't be inboxing me. I'm not saying that he wasn't a prisoner of war. I understand that he died, not died. I understand that he fought for this country, et cetera, et cetera. But girl, they did already changed and put it on Google. When I go to Google.com, it puts it, it puts it right up there that he died. I think they should honor him like that. Go ahead and run it on the news. It could be on the crawl. But you black folks that couldn't wait to post it, that he died, like he really did something, like he really did something for y'all. Y'all act like he really did something for y'all. Here, this woman, Katherine Johnson, is responsible for uh uh, 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 man getting to the moon and all this other stuff and they done did a movie that most of y'all didn't even know nothing about and some of y'all didn't even still go and see Hidden Figures. She turned 100 years old. How many people you know been on the planet 100 years and y'all ain't post that lady's picture? 
But y'all posting shit. Y'all posting John McCain. Girl, y'all something else. When I say y'all something else, I done forgot to cut my damn onion up sitting here, standing here yelling at y'all. Y'all posting John McCain. Girl, if y'all don't sit out somewhere, it's like we, we, it's like we are so forgiving. It's like we're so forgiving. It's like, I don't care how badly we are treated in this country, y'all always manage to see the good in people. Child, uh, Aretha Franklin died the other day. Some of y'all ain't even posted that. Child, y'all ain't even post that, ladies. Y'all ain't even post that lady's picture. Y'all sitting around talking about how she beef with Patty. Child, how, how she beefing with Patty LaBelle. Y'all ain't said nothing good about that lady, but y'all got all this good stuff to say about John McCain. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. I ain't even showing you what I'm done yet because I'm so busy ranting. All I did was chopped up the cabbage and the onion. And the mushroom. I'm about to chop up the onion now. Let me turn this around so y'all can see. Y'all something else, I tell you. All right, so we're going to chop up this onion. And again, I'm not saying that... That's like if Donald Trump died tomorrow. What y'all going to be posting? Oh, he was a good man. Child. Thank you, Brian Tucson. You know I got to let them have it. Now listen, if all of the white people stop buying my books, I'm going to need y'all to buy these books now. Because <laughs> I'm saying what I'm saying. If you need to buy a book, go ahead and buy the book, black people. <laughs> you can buy them through Amazon. You can download them on any e-reader. I narrate them on Audible. Just type in Craig Stewart on audible.com. Or you can cash at me. One book is $20, 236, 354. My cash app ID is the writer. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and saute this in some vegan butter. I'm gonna show you the vegan butter that I use. I've showed you guys before, but I know there are always new people coming on. So I use Earth Balance, soy free, soy free. All right, so we got, can y'all see that? Let me see. Let me bring y'all down here. Ooh, my eyes are burning. Damn onion. Can y'all see that? All right, y'all can see that. All right, so we got our onion in there. We might need a little bit more butter because you know butter kind of burns kind of quickly. So we'll get some more butter. But see, the beauty of this is this is not all that saturated fat and stuff that, that they have in that regular butter. So this butter's gonna give it a nice flavor. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our purple cabbage and mushroom in here. Because remember, when we do our, our wrap, we're gonna garnish it with this. Now, of course, I'm not putting all of this on it, so I'll eat some of this on the side when I make something else later. But I just had to come on here and let y'all up about that John McCain thing. Because if I saw one more John McCain post about from one of you black people, y'all act like he did so much for us. Y'all need to cut it out. All right, so we're going to saute this, but we need to put a little something in it. So we're going to put a little garlic powder. Get away from the salt. Back up from the salt, knees. Back up from the salt, knees. That's why your ankles are swelling. That's why your ankles and your elbows and your wrists are swelling. Okay? Back up, knees. And then you go ahead and get your little black pepper. Or you can use white pepper. Let's use some white pepper. I haven't used this in a while. We have white ground pepper. That one's not open. So we got some white ground pepper. We'll shake some of this on here. Oh, that one ain't open either. Well, where's the one that's open? Oh. 
I never found the open one. I thought I had one that was open. So, uh, what's that? What's that first name? Is that Gianni? Yes, I can cook. I'm gonna make an amazing husband one day. Now, I don't like to cook every day though. Put a little white pepper in here. Now, I know some of you are craving some salt, so we'll put a little bit of Lowry's. We'll put a little bit of Lowry's. That's all you need. All right? This going to have a nice little flavor. And you don't have to keep adding butter to it, even though I'm using vegan butter. But you can add like a little bit of water because the cabbage itself is water too. So we're going to let this saute. We're going to move this over here out of the way. And then we have our shrimp. I'm going to leave y'all right there. We have our shrimp. Now with the shrimp, I'm going to go ahead and season them. I've already thawed them. Not thawed out. It's called thawed. Okay? So we, we've already thawed the shrimp. Some of y'all be saying thawed out. It's just thawed. So we have these thawed. And we're going to go ahead and season these. I like to season mine ahead of time. So you know my saying, you're not cooking seafood if you're not using Old Bay. So we're going to go ahead and get us some Old Bay. We got some Old Bay. And you want to be generous with the Old Bay. That's why you don't need no salt over there because there's salt in Old Bay. Old Bay. So you want to be generous with your Old Bay. All right? You can do a little pepper on here too. I'm going to do a black pepper on these. Now, I'm going to tell you a little tip. A little bit of um, Bragg's um, apple cider vinegar is good in your shrimp. Did y'all know that? You only need about a teaspoon. Uh -oh. You only need about a tablespoon, rather. You pour a little bit of that in there. It gives it a nice flavor. Trust me, I know. I'm from Maryland. We know seafood. All right, so that's all you really need in here. Now, I'm going to get another pan because we're going to... Let's turn let's stir her a little bit because we don't want her to get burned up. Ain't nothing like some burned cabbage. But I cleaned up this... Well, I didn't clean up, but I, I, I did some laundry, changed the sheets on my bed. Sunday is the day that I changed the sheets on my bed. You can put some lemon on your shrimp. I didn't do that. Sometimes I do it, not all the time. I changed the sheet on my bed, and um, I did some laundry. I had to wash some of my bath towels and colored clothes. I was low on panties. No, I don't really wear panties. I just like the way it sounds. We're gonna use another pot or pan. We're gonna get this one started. We're gonna use vegan butter again. Instead of olive oil, you can use olive oil. And here's what I was going to do. I was going to do a shrimp pasta. Now, this is a, an organic red lentil penne. So lentil is where you get your protein. So th these are not regular bleached pasta. These are vegan pasta noodles. The only difference is they have to cook a little longer. They have to boil a little longer. So we're going to keep stirring up the, the cabbage and stuff. So right here we have cabbage, mushroom, and onion. And we're just going to braise this. We're going to braise this cabbage. And we're going to use this to go on, on our wrap, in our wrap. So let me get some butter for our shrimp to saute over here. And put this up because we need a clean kitchen. We need a clean kitchen. Stop looking at my privacy. I see y'all looking. Y'all nasty. It's Sunday. Y'all dick watching. Dick watching on a Sunday. Make no sense. Some of y'all just leaving church and you, you looking at my crotch. Uh, Barbara Lee Paul, I think it's your internet service is buffering. 
Am I buffering for everybody or is that just Barbara Lee Paul? You know how as a kid you'd be like, stop looking at my privacy. You're looking at my privacy. All right, so we got this going. And so you can kind of move the shrimp around since you season them. You can kind of move them around. You don't need to season. That's all you need. You don't need nothing else because remember, we seasoned this too. Okay, yeah, I think it's Barbara's internet. I think Barbara may have Obama service. <laughs> An Obama phone, rather, not service. Yo, uh, Barbara, I think you got to get rid of that Obama phone. Trump is president now. You know, he getting fucked up everything. All right, so we're going to keep... Keep moving this around right here. Okay, yeah, it's, it's Barbara's service. Barbara, go out and come back in, uh, sugar. Okay, niece? Okay, great niece? Go out and come back in, great niece. I know some of y'all may only have one utensil, but I have a few, so just go and get you some more utensils. Don't be, don't be using two, the same utensil. Get you another utensil. Okay, so we have another utensil for the shrimp. And we're going to saute these really nicely. And what? Y'all want a glass of wine? Come on, let's get some wine. We're going to do a Chateau Saint Michel. It's a Riesling. It's a white. It's a white Riesling. Grab my wine. I had a really good conversation with my mother today. And um, we were talking about health and eating habits and smoking, like cigarettes, not weed, for those of you that are weed heads. Cheers! And so we were talking about health and stuff, right? So, oh, this smells delicious. You know that little bit of um, apple cider vinegar that I put in here? It gives it a really nice flavor and smell. Can you see how, you see how pink they are? Look at that. Dr. Young sent these shrimp here to me. She sent all this shit you see me in here cooking, okay? Quiet as a cat. Um, so my mother and I were talking, and so she said something really profound to me. My mother, my mother used to work in a hospital. My mother was a clerk. She was a unit clerk at a hospital in Baltimore for years. She retired from there, but during the time that she was working there, she also became an entrepreneur. Now, if you read my first book, you know this. Some of you think that my books are just about being part of the community, but they're not. There's some life lessons in there. Stop being cheap and go ahead and get the book now. So, she, um, you know, worked in the hospital, and she was saying today how, like, there were so many times that she would overhear the doctors and nurses telling different patients that were diabetic or pre-diabetic, okay, well, you need to go ahead and come off you know, certain diet, certain food, you need to change your diet. And my mother was saying at the time, she didn't understand why that was so difficult for people to come off their certain diet. You know, like if the doctor's telling you, you know, you're pre-diabetic and whatever. She said, I didn't understand why they just couldn't make a simple life choice. And she said, so we cutting off the cab, we cut off the cabbage, okay, because it's nice and braised. <laughs> So she said, I don't understand why they couldn't make a simple life choice. Now, I'm going to move y'all over here because we got to get our wrap together. Okay, we got to get the moving. We're going to move this stuff over here. We got to get our wrap together. All right, so we're going to get our wrap together. And so she said, um, I don't know why this one has a hole in it. And because it has a hole in it, I don't want to eat that one. I don't want my stuff falling in between that, out of that hole. So I'm gonna skip over that one. I'm a finicky eater. 
You know, but it's important to not just be a finicky eater. You need to be finicky in the choices that you make in your life and the people that you allow in your life. I remember there was a time, it was like, you sitting here, you don't want to eat bruised fruit, but you would deal with these bruised, broken men. Huh? You need to be just as choicy with the men you date. But anyway, or women. So my mother used to say, you know, she was like, I don't understand why it was so hard to make a choice. She said, but then when I became diabetic, I understood how and why it was so difficult. These shrimp are coming together really nicely. Look at that. Now I like a little, I like a little scorch on my shrimp. Not like, not burn, but you know, I want them, I want a nice little grill on it. So I'm going to leave her on here for a couple more seconds. And so she said it wasn't until she had to, you know, come off certain things and become, uh, you know, diabetic because she was diabetic, that she understood it. She said, and I'll be honest with you, she said, if I, if I didn't start to have uh, liver disease, you know, because some of you I've told, I mean, I've said many times before, um, stop looking at my titties. My mom is on dialysis. And so when she's found out that she was suffering from liver disease or kidney failure or renal failure, which, they, which they'll call it as well, she said, that's the only reason I stopped smoking. Now, here's, here's the truth. Now, I believe she probably was going to stop smoking. But at that point, I jumped on the plane and I went home and I said, girl, you done with these cigarettes. And I literally took the cigarettes. I said, this is it. There are no more cigarettes. I've told you guys this story before. So I took all of the cigarettes and was like, There's not, that's it. We're done here. Niece, you're done. So she said, I still have cravings for cigarettes. And she said, okay, so look, our shrimp are done. We're going to take these off the burner. Because, see, we don't want them burned. Ooh, they look nice. They look delectable. Say delectable. So she said, there are days that I'm, I really, it takes everything in me not to go and, um, you know, get some cigarettes. And, um, and I, was, I was fascinated by that because I'm thinking, like, girl, you supposed to be in Dallas. It's three days a week. She only goes two. And you still crave cigarettes? But, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, it, it, it really is an addiction. You know what I'm saying? So think about that, like, with the people in your life, your family members or neighbors or whatever that might be addicted to drugs. And you're looking at them like, bitch, you look like Skeletor. Like, when are you going to come off them? When are you going to come up off them drugs? It's not that easy. You know what I'm saying? But like I was saying to my mom, and of course, I've, I've never been addicted to a drug. I've never smoked cigarettes. Well, you know, as a kid, you just buy the little Lucy cigarettes. On my way to Shake and Bake, Roll a Ring. That's in the first book, too. And we used to be fast and try to smoke cigarettes and shit. You know, but the point that I'm making is I don't have really an addictive personality. And so I really do believe that if I was a smoker and a doctor came and said to me, listen, we need you to come up off these cigarettes. I think I'd be the kind of person that could come off cold turkey. I really do think that I could. Because that's just the kind of person that I am. But I know everybody is different. You know how some people come off of drugs, cold turkey, they don't go to rehab or anything like that. I'm looking for my vegan sour cream. What y'all know about vegan sour cream? See, some of you that make all these excuses, well, I just don't want to eat this stuff. Girl, they got vegan sour cream. Now, I got regular sour cream in here, too. Now, the regular sour cream, are, this is for the people that come over here to eat at my house. I don't eat this shit. I eat the vegan one. So I put the, I put the regular sour cream in here for people that come. But I got vegan, I got vegan um, salad dressings, and I have regular salad dressings. You know, you just, you know. So I said to her, I said, I just think that I have the kind of personality that I would be able to come off cold turkey. I think I've shared this story with you guys before. I have a friend. If I didn't, I'm going to share it now. I have a friend whose father was pre-diabetic. Oh, this vegan, this vegan um, sour cream is good. It's amazing. Sour cream. It's by, by Tofuti. So a friend of mine, her father was pre-diabetic. He went in for an appointment. And they said, yes, yeah, sir. You know, it looks like... Can y'all see what I'm doing? Let me show you. So all I did right now was put the... Um, 
this is just purple cabbage. The onions and the uh, mushroom are already cut up and sauteed in there, right? We're gonna do the shrimp. Ain't nobody coming over here, Tiffany. I'm having I'm having dinner by myself. I don't need no motherfucker to come over here to eat with me. All right, so you put your shrimp on here, and then you put whatever else you want on it. Now I think this is all I'm gonna do, cause I got mushroom, cabbage. You could have done some rice. You could have done some brown rice, but I don't. I don't. I didn't. No, I didn't do all of that. Um, I'm gonna put some of this. Um, this right here, this sour cream, this vegan sour cream. That's all you need. Now, what I could have done was I could have smeared the sour cream on the actual wrap. I wasn't thinking because I was talking. But it would have gone nice and evenly that way, really. And then I think what I'm going to do is, because I'm feeling really, really snackish, I'm going to put some, um, I'm going to let y'all decide. What do we want to put on it? So, so here's here. He, these are vegan. These are vegan. So here's a vegan ranch. Here's a vegan Thousand Island. And this is a vegan Chipotle mayo. Which one do I want to put on here? Um, I also have. Um, I also have this Ortega taco sauce. I'm gonna put some of that on there too. bit of this on here because you know we like we like flavors to be bursting in our mouth flavors I didn't say anything else bursting in your mouth I said flavors some of y'all nasty chipotle mayo which one I think I'm going to go with the ranch because I put this taco sauce on here. This is going to be real juicy looking. All right, that's all we need. And then we're going to put this back up and we're going to go over here and sit down. Let me get my wine. Get my wine. Come on over here and sit down. Come on, Rochelle Pharrell, sing. You know, you got to have a nice little Sunday where you, um, you know, you just move around your house. Let me turn out this light. We got all this natural sunlight coming in. We don't need no light. So, cheers again. Christina, y'all were definitely thinking about a milkshake when I said bursting in your mouth. See, I know even the word milkshake went over some of y'all head. But I know some of you nasty ones. Y'all know what a milkshake is. Let me get a paper towel. So, one of my homegirls, her father went in to the doctors and they told him he was pre-diabetic. So he had to come back for his follow-up appointment. I guess they were going to put him on his regimen, give him his, you know, tell him what he needed to do. Baby, the day after he went in to that appointment where they told him, sir, you're pre-diabetic, the very next day, he started walking four miles a day. Not running, for those of you that are already turning your nose up. He was walking. He walked four miles a day. And if he missed a day because it was raining or because, you know, he had other things to do or whatever, he would double up and do eight miles the next time. By the time he went for that follow-up appointment, they said, we don't know what you did, but you're no longer diabetic. We don't have to, we don't have to put you on that. And so, you know, my mom was saying today, she was just like, you know, I, I know that if I could still smoke cigarettes, I would smoke. She said, because I think most people, she said, what I've realized is most people think you're either going to die from, you're going to die from something. And something, you got to die at some point. And I said to her, I said, that's true. I said, but I want to be able to have a quality of life before I die. You know what I'm saying? Like, all she complains about now is having to go to dialysis. She always complained about having to go to dialysis. 
And I'm like, but, and I don't say this, but I've said it before, but I don't say it like I'm about to say it now. I'm like, but girl, you don't want y'all to smoke all your life. Like she smoked all of my life. And you know, I'm 42. She's only stopped smoking. It might be coming up on two years. So she smoked at least 40 years that I, all of the life that I've known her. So it's not just about, oh, well, you're going to die from something. But it's like, well, girl, I don't want to be, girl, I don't want to be barely, barely making it while I'm here. And, you know, we started talking about, you know, one of my friends, those of you, you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say his name, even though he came on here and talked. But, you know, he's having a really tough time and he's younger than I am. Like heart failure and like, girl, he's 39, 40. And he's been having problems for at least the past I don't know. And his life has changed completely. Life has changed. Y'all asking me where to get this sour cream. You get it the same place you get that stuff y'all eat. <laughs> it's in the same dairy section. This just doesn't have dairy in it. The butter is in the same section where you get the country crop and all that stuff. I ain't good with folding these. So I'm just going to go ahead and bite. My God. Mm, 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 mm. And listen, the vegan butter tastes just like the regular butter. It really does. Now, there are some things that don't translate well, but this does. Girl, that cabbage. Look at that. Look at them juices coming out. Oh. Father, we thank you for the food we're about to receive. Let it be for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No, I'm not Catholic. My grandmother was, and she taught me how to pray. Mm. Mm. Look at that bursting. Mm. Mm. What is this I'm listening to? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So... I was saying to my mom earlier, I said, you know, my my earliest memory of cancer, my cousin dated this girl. And my cousin has always dated older women. Wait a minute, let me get a little bit of Rochelle Farrell in here. Hold on. And so my cousin has always dated older women, right? Oh, she falling apart. Look. See, this is why I don't like these raps. Mm. Mm. That's okay, because I'm going to eat it. Yeah, I'm going to need to figure out how to fold the burrito, because this is the map. But my cousin, he has always dated older women. And so, he was dating this woman. And I was saying to my, my mom today, I said, you know, whenever I think about cancer, my mind always goes back to her. She died when I was probably, I don't know if I was in middle school, if I had made it to high school yet. I don't know. But she is my earliest memory of cancer. My brother and sister smoke. I'm the only one that didn't smoke. My father and I are the only ones that didn't smoke. And so she had breast cancer. And she and my mom, of course, are different generations. But like I said, she was, she was a little older. But she and my mom were really close. She was like in her 30s. Like she, was, she probably was in her late 30s, mid to late 30s. And she had two boys. And I remember she died. But I remember she would be on the phone with my mom and my mom would tell me like, oh my God, I feel so bad. Like she would be crying. Like she'd be crying, saying how scared she was. She was worried about who was going to take care of her boys when she died. And cause like we knew she was going to die. Like death was imminent. And um, so that's my earliest memory. So whenever I think about cancer, even to this day, I always go back to her. It's amazing how your your memories, like, like something will plant a seed, an indelible mark in your mind. And so for me, whenever I think about cancer, it goes back to her. And then it goes to 
excuse me, another one of my mom's friends, she had lung cancer and she died. And I used to tell my mother, do you see these people around you dying? Like, girl, you need to come up with these cigarettes. And she was like, child, leave me alone. That's what my mother used to say. So, mm -mm. I'm going to get to the song I want. And so, I said to my mother, and I've said to you guys before, you know, when I was a kid, when somebody had cancer, it was like, oh my gosh, she has cancer? What what kind of cancer? Oh, no, 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 no. When I was young, it was like, oh my gosh, she has cancer? And it was always like a scary thing. But now it's like, you hear somebody got cancer, you're like, oh my God, she has cancer? What kind? Like you immediately go to what kind? Where back then it was just like, usually people were dying of like a, a breast cancer or they had a lung cancer. Now you got people who got ovarian cancer, brain cancer. You be like, damn, throat cancer. This is falling apart, something terrible, but that's okay. We like family, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat this right here. Mm. In front of y'all. I mean, I wouldn't be able to eat like this out in public. Even though this is kind of like public. But, mm, I should say, yeah, that's true. But I say to you guys all the time, like your body is speaking to you. Like in respect, with respect to, hey, knees. It's definitely in the food, Jade. It's definitely in the food. And that's why I stopped eating meat. But that's why I say to you guys all the time, your body is always speaking to you. With respect to my friend. He was walking with a cane and he was in his 30s. Steve Brown, I'm about to get into this rap. Do you hear me? He was in his 30s, already on high blood pressure. I got a friend right now who has been on high blood pressure medicine since he was in high school. Now, you know something wrong. You got high blood pressure and you in high school? What do you think you're going to be when you're 45? What do you think your quality of life going to be when you're 50? It's not a judgment. I'm not judging you guys. I'm just saying, you got to pay attention to shit like that. And like I was saying to my mom, like you complained about having to go to dialysis, but girl, you had, you had the chances to do a nasty left turn and come off them cigarettes and change the way you ate back in the day. Child, she be going down Lexington Market getting uh, chitlins and stuff. Girl, leave them chitlins alone. Some of y'all sitting there with a plate of chitlins right now. It's Sunday too. You got hog mowers. And so speaking of scary, Angela Twyman, I was saying to my mother today, I said, you know, at some point there's some things that you're not going to be able to control. Your body is going to start to break down. But I'm going to tell you this. What scares me is not being able to be in control of that when that happens. So I want to be able to be in control for as long as I can. So like, I eat this. Hey, Carol Cole. High blood pressure in high school. I know a couple people that had high, that they've been on medication since high school. And they in their 30s. Not 40s, they're in their 30s. And you know, after, after time, taking them high blood pressure pills, it affects your kidneys. over time. You know how I always say Nephi's a nasty bitch? <laughs> Nephi's a nasty bitch. Just remember that. Just remember that, okay? I can't pick it up no more. She's falling apart. Right, see, Valerie, like, high blood pressure was running on my mother's side. But there's still things that you can do to regulate it. Like, so what I did was, I had stopped eating pork. 
because I didn't want that to be a problem for me. Speaking of things being in your genes, I'm waiting on my um, lab test to come back. I don't know if you guys remember, but one of the things that Tonette sent me was a lab test, and it'll tell you, like, your family history. It'll tell you, like, your uh, family health stuff. Like, I had to spit in this little tube and shake it up, and I had to mail it in, and it takes, like, six weeks to get the results. So it's like a DNA ancestry type thing, and it'll tell you, like, any type of things that are on your... Oh, Tonette, you're in there. So I'm waiting for that to come back. So, you know, it's important to do stuff like that. To figure out what's going on in your family line. Look at Leisha, I'm going to get a fall. I don't feel like getting up. But she almost did gone. Chase called me last night on FaceTime. He trying to come spend the night. He's talking about Quag. You know he says my name like it has a W. Craig. I said, yeah. What you doing? I said, well, right now, Chase, I'm not doing anything. This was last night. Oh, no, actually, I was about to go over to Mike's house because Mike made seafood. She did fell all apart. And so, um... I said, I'm about to go over to one of my friends' house for seafood. But Chase is allergic to shellfish, so he, he can eat seafood. He can eat fish, but he can't eat shellfish. And so he said, well, I want to come spend a night. I said, well, kid, you better come soon. Because September 11th, I will be leaving town, and I'll pretty much be gone the entire month of September. September 15th, I'll be in Los Angeles for a signing. September 22nd, the very next week, I'll be in Hyattsville, Maryland at the Bus Boy and Poets. September 28th, I'll be in Charleston, South Carolina. That's the next Friday. September 29th, Saturday, I'll be in Greenville, South Carolina. And then I'll be back in Atlanta, be back in Atlanta okay and then we're figuring out some dates for October mm. I feel like I have to sneeze booked and busy so listen do I need to bring books to Hyattsville Maryland are there gonna be people there who need to buy books mm. I would hope so they think I'm going to be flying around the country just to come and sit and talk. Hey. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> oh, Bianca's late. <laughs> this is a shrimp wrap. Mm. Hey, Jonathan Harris. Oh, hey, Deanna Drayton. Okay, I'll bring books. Oh, yeah, Ira. I do need to schedule something for Atlanta again. I do need to schedule something for Atlanta again. All right, this is about to be it because I can't be fooling with this. Like, this is the last piece of shrimp in here. So it's two shrimp right here. Okay, so yes, I'll have my bricks, bread bugs. What post, Bianca? Hey, girl. Hey, what's up, Sandra? Westbrook. So, listen, I just want to come in and talk to y'all about John McCain. That was it. Because y'all were getting on my nerves. I have orders to ship out tomorrow. I have books to ship out tomorrow. Deanna want me to bring cards, too. What did Bianca say? You know I got food and stuff on my hand. 
Turn food all on my teeth. You donated a thousand? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. wait. You talking about to the GoFundMe? Let me go over here. Girl, don't play with me. Is that what you talking about? Hold on. Let me get over here. Because, baby, I might do old Baptist shout. Wait, so did she donate or she didn't donate? She playing with my feelings now. I can't sign into this GoFundMe fast enough. Oh, she didn't. So what you saying I had to come on at nine? Wait, what? Bianca playing. Hey, niece. Anyway, if you need to purchase books, I pinned the information down here and up here. Um, the writer is my cash app. One book is $20, 236 354 I always cover the shipping. But you can also purchase through Amazon. You can go through audible.com. I narrate the first two books. Um, you can download the digital version or you can go through Audible. Barbara Lee Paul is still saying her, her phone is buffering. Well, niece, we about to get off here, so don't even worry about it. You have a fantastic Monday. Um, Friday, what's today? Sunday. And listen, I won't be on tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Because the Queen's Supreme Court returns. Where'd Bianca go? Go ahead to this cash out. <laughs> Kylie with her messy self. Kylie talking about Barbara, it's your internet, not ours. Sorry. Excuse me. So listen, you guys brush your teeth, floss your teeth tonight. Have an amazing day. All right? I will see you guys Tuesday at 9 p.m. Bye. Please share the video. Hit share.